A dozen eggs contains three defectives. If a sample of size 5 is taken with replacement, find the probability that exactly two of the eggs sampled are defective. Find the probability that two or fewer of the eggs sampled are defective. Now in this particular case, n, our number of Bernoulli trials is 5. Each time we check an egg, it is either defective or it is not defective. Now when we sample with replacement, which is a very unusual way to sample three eggs from a dozen, because typically you don't replace the eggs, um, if you did not replace the eggs, then you would have a different distribution. You would have something that's known as the hypergeometric distribution. But in this particular case, we do replace them, and that allows us to have a constant probability of success on each trial. Well, what is success in this case? Since we keep looking at getting a defective egg, we're going to define a success to be getting a defective egg. You can define a success to be anything you want, including a, a negative event like a defective egg. Well, if that's the case, then the probability of success on each trial, because we're replacing the eggs, is going to be 3 divided by 12. And 3 twelfths is the same as 1 fourth. Now, once we have our binomial distribution parameters set, we can write down the probability mass function. And it is 5, choose x, times the probability p, which is 1 fourth to the x, times 1 minus p, which is 3 fourths to the n minus x, that'll be 5 minus x, and the support starts at 0, and it ends at n, which in this case is 5. Next thing we want to calculate is the probability that two of the eggs sampled are defective. So that is the probability that the random variable capital X assumes the value 2. And that will be the probability mass function evaluated at 2. So we have 5, choose 2, times 1 fourth squared times 3 fourths cubed. Work that out. 5 choose 2 is the same as 5 times 4, which is 20, divided by 1 times 2, which is 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10. So the binomial coefficient out front here is 10. 1 squared is 1. 3 cubed is 27. 27 times 10 is 270. That's our numerator. In the denominator, you have 4 squared times 4 cubed. That's 4 raised to the 5th power. 4 raised to the 5th power is the same as 2 to the 10th power. And 2 to the 10th power is 1,024. Now, sometimes it's nice to leave this as an exact fraction. And you'd probably want to put that in, in lowest terms. And sometimes it's also nice to see it as a decimal equivalent. And this turns out to be 0 0.2637. So that takes care of the first thing to calculate. Second thing to calculate is to find the probability that two or fewer of the eggs sampled are defective. And that is the probability that the random variable capital X is less than or equal to 2. And in this case, we're going to have to add up f of 0 plus f of 1 plus f of 2. Now f of 2 we just calculated up above. That's the uh, 270 divided by 1024. But you've got to go through this same procedure for f of 1 and for f of 0. You can see that's going to be a little bit tedious. I will spare you of the details. This turns out to be 918 as a numerator divided by 1024. And when you work out the decimal equivalent of that, you get 0.8965. So that takes care of the analytic solution to these things. But you can see already 
that even on this fairly small problem with n only being equal to 5, it can be a real pain to calculate these by hand. And that is what the next slide is about. The next slide concerns our functions that are associated with the binomial distribution that can be used to calculate some of these variables. Now the key thing are these first letters D, P, Q, and R and then you put the name of the distribution binome short for binomial. D will give you the probability mass function. So whatever x value goes in here with parameters n and p which are the parameters of the binomial this will give you the probability mass function. P will give you the cumulative distribution function, capital F of x. Q will calculate a percentile of the distribution. I give that as F inverse of u. Notice it has a u parameter up front here. And finally, our binome will generate m, the first parameter, binomial random variates. So if you want to use R to calculate the probability of exactly two defective eggs in the sample from the previous problem, you can just type in D binome 2, 5, and 1 fourth, and it will come back and give you the 0.2637. If you want to calculate the probability of two or fewer eggs in the sample, now we're looking for a CDF value, and so you put in P binome of 2, 5, and 1 fourth, and it will come back with 0.8965. These are two new questions, but I wanted to illustrate all four of these. So if you want the 95th percentile of the distribution of x, that is the number of defectives in five um, samples drawn with replacement from the dozen eggs, you can put in Q binome you put your 0.95 up front, front and then as usual you put in N and you put in P and this will tell you that 3 is the 95th percentile of that distribution. Finally the last illustration of these functions if you say R binome MNP and in this case R binome 9, 5, and 1 fourth this will conduct 9 Bernoulli experiments of our five um, eggs sampled each with a probability of defective of one-fourth and so you can see we get a zero one time we got no defectives all the eggs were fine and then on th four occasions we we got one defective on three occasions we got two defectives and then way out here out in the tail one time we happened to generate four bad eggs out of the five. Now finally the next slide concerns a Monte Carlo simulation in case we're nervous about that probability of getting exactly five eggs in the sample and I'll run through how this simulation goes. The whole Monte Carlo is all done in one line right here very efficient and this one million that you see right there that is the number of trials so I'll go ahead and indicate that right here one million is the number of trials of the simulation that you execute and the R binome right here will generate one million trials from a binomial distribution with n equals five and p equals one fourth so right there that will generate you a vector of 1 million values that are all equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. So there's a long vector of a million values. Each element of that vector will be a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Now at this point we check to see if they are equal to 2. So now we have in here a vector of 1 million values which are either true if you get two defectives in the sample or false if you don't get two defectives in the sample. Finally you add up those trues and falses and R is smart enough to know that when you apply the sum function to a bunch of trues and falses it treats the falses as zeros 
and the trues is one. So here are the number of those one million trials that will give you um, exactly two defectives. And when you divide that by one million, you get an estimate for the um, number of, I should say not number of, but the fraction of times that you get exactly two defectives. When you run this once, you get 0.2636 and then 0.26377, etc. Notice that these are all coming in uh, at about 0.2637. And so this confirms, not confirms, but supports our notion that the probability that x equals 2 was around 0.2637. You can never confirm that you have the analytic right, but you can certainly um, have a lot of support for that. Now, incidentally, you're familiar with the sum divided by a certain number being the same as the mean function. So this can certainly be shortened in this fashion. You can just take the mean of all of those and you'll also get this value. Let's go ahead and execute this. I'm going to go ahead and hide that particular slide. And I'm going to go into R right now and actually run a couple of those simulations. Um, this is a different version of R from last time. Notice that this one here is version 3.1.1. Its name is Socket to Me. And uh, by the way, if you ever hit Control L, and I'll go ahead and hit it here, Control L will clear the screen. I'm going to go ahead and type in that command, which is the mean of R binome with parameters 1 million and 5 and 1 fourth. And we want to check to see if those are equal to 2. And you'll get a certain probability. Notice that I can set a random number seed, and I'll use stream 14 in this case beforehand, and that will allow these results to be repeatable. So if I now do uh, a call to our binome and the uh, mean function, you can see I get 0.263414. And I can run this again and again and again. I'm just using the up arrow to repeat the command. And these are hovering around 0.2637. So this does uh, support our analytic solution.